Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor, Warren William, and featuring Mary McCarty, Gene Colby, and Howard Culver, with an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story, Singapore Liz. But first... Back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Singapore Liz. I'll never forget the first time I saw Singapore Liz. I stood at the rail of the ship as it eased into its berth at Singapore. Below on the docks was Bedlam. Coolies, turbaned orientals, white people were all milling around the dock, waiting for the passengers to disembark. Here, east was meeting west. And then, quite suddenly, I saw her. She was standing alone, leaning up against a round life boy that hung suspended from a piling. Her hair was blonde and tawny and hung down around her shoulders. She had on a bright red sweater. And then I saw her eyes, green eyes that searched and probed our ship from stem to stern. As I watched her, the deck steward came up alongside of me. He saw her, too. There she is. Singapore Liz. Hasn't missed a boat in five years. Singapore Liz, eh? I've heard of her before. But tell me, Steward, how'd she acquire that name? Oh, I don't know, Mr. O'Connell. She's a character, though, right enough. Pretty as a picture, too. I often wonder what brings her down to the waterfront every time a ship docks. I've heard plenty of stories. And what seems to be the real story? Why do girls watch ship come in for anyway? <laughs> Not to see the smoke and hear the bells ring, no. When a girl meets a ship, every ship, day or night, it's because of a guy. You think that Singapore Liz is looking no, for something? No, I don't some... know. You lot of funny yarns, especially here at Singapore, where east meets west. But that girl's real story hasn't been told. She won't talk. Won't talk, huh? Generally, girls like to tell what's on their minds. Yeah, but not this one. She just comes down and looks. Then when everyone's off the ship, she goes back to her job. Oh, what kind of a job? Well, she's a singer down at one of the dives along the waterfront. Terry's place, they call it. Huh? What a spot, too, from what I hear. Well, that means the old gangplank is down. Good luck, Mr. O'Connell, if I don't see you again. And uh, take a tip from an old sailor. <laughs> oh, what's that? Every sailor from Frisco to the Hebrides has tried to find out what it's all about. So if you're thinking of trying to get Singapore Liz to talk, forget it. <laughs> it can't be done. The steward should have known better than to tell a lawyer not to try and learn the secret of Singapore Liz. For lawyers are a curious lot, especially when it comes to an unsolved mystery. The very first night I had free, I visited... Terry's place on the waterfront. And <laughs> what a place it turned out to be. Here's a seat. Over here, mister. Thank you. Will it be? Tell you what. Bring me a pot of tea. Green tea. And uh, buy yourself the best drink in the house. How's that? Okay. Okay. I'll take a Singapore special and bring you the tea. Green tea. Now, uh, say, before you go... 
Tell me something. Sure. Who's uh, Terry, the, the man who owns this place? I'm Terry, mister. Oh? Who are you? Oh, well, Terry, my name's O'Connell, John Francis O'Connell. I'm a lawyer from the States. What you over here for? Well, it's no secret. I'm over here to locate a missing person, an heir. A woman who inherited a million dollars. As yet, she doesn't know about it. <laughs> a dame gets a million bucks and don't know about it. Say, <laughs> that's a laugh. <laughs> What's your name, bub? I mean, Mr. O'Connell. Her name is Marilyn Webster. Ever heard of her? Listen, mister, I know nearly every dame in Singapore, but I ain't never heard of Marilyn Webster. Well, I'll run along and bring you tea. You listen to Liz. She's going on now with her number. Oh, you mean Singapore Liz? Yeah. That's her. Boy, is she a dame. She's my guy. I don't care what he does Cause he's my guy I guess he always was He's careless about me I don't think he tries But once in a while He'll hug me and smile I can see me in his eyes Oh, he's my guy I know he always This was a dame, all right. And was she beautiful? That same tawny hair now hung low over the back of a green silk Chinese gown. Her voice was throaty, inviting. She'd have been a sensation on Broadway. But what was she doing in this dive? Way out here in Singapore. I'm his until I die. Cause nobody knows better than I that he is my God. Here's your tea, mister. What'd you think of Liz? I think she's terrific, Terry. What keeps her in a... Well, in a place like this? I don't know. Some dames like to hang around the waterfront. Like the smell of the sea and like to hear the foghorns in the night. Mm. You never know what's in a dame's mind, mister. And I know. I've been running joints here in Singapore for 15 years. I meet them all. Uh, Terry. Yeah? Would you please give Singapore Liz my card and tell her that I share her curiosity about docking ships? Oh, ho, ho. that's a new one. Every guy east of Sunset wants to buy Liz a drink, but it's no soap. She don't see nobody. But I'm a lawyer, Terry. You see, lawyers have a way with women. Okay, okay. It's a deal with me. But if you get turned down, don't feel bad. No one's made the grade yet. went past and no Singapore Liz. Then, just as I was ready to call it quits, I saw her come through the smoke-filled room towards my table. Well, maybe we lawyers did have a way after all. You want to see me, mister? Yes. Uh, yes, I did, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... The name is Liz. Singapore Liz. Well, Miss Singapore, won't you sit down and join me in a cup of tea? Okay. Well, Singapore... I asked you to come to my table tonight because you interest me. Oh, that's a good one, mister. Only it doesn't register. Get this straight. I may interest you, but you don't interest me. Oh, now, just a minute. Let's get the record straight. I'm not after your phone number or your address. Well, you wouldn't get them if you were. <laughs> I saw you the morning my ship docked. I saw you leaning against the pier, looking up at the people aboard. Your look was hungry hungry for someone you miss. If you'll let me, I'll help you. And you don't want anything. Ha <laughs> ha, holy cow, this is one for the books. Here's a guy who wants to help and doesn't want anything for it. Well, what is this, a gag? <laughs> I can assure you that it's not a gag, Singapore. Oh, so you're a lawyer. Yes, I am. You have my card. Well, maybe I can trust you. Well, of course you can. 
Well, well, mister, you're right about me looking for someone. I've never missed a ship in five years. I keep on looking, but he never comes back the way he said he would. He, Singapore? Who is he? He's a guy. Well, maybe I can help you find him. Nah, how are you going to find one little guy in a billion people? It's been done. But this guy, this guy said he'd come back. He promised. Why don't you tell me about it, Singapore? Well, listen, mister, there, there's a freight to do at the docks at midnight. I'll tell you the story down there. You see, that's where it began and ended. Right. Down there in the swirl of the fog in the night. Yep. Down on the dirty docks in Singapore. A little after midnight, I made my way through the fog and the gloom to the long docks that lined the harbor. Near the water's edge, I found Singapore Liz waiting patiently for the freighter to come in. Hello, Singapore. Hiya, Mr. O'Connell. When's she going to dock? Oh, not for an hour or two. She's anchored out in the bay. Just like the other one was. What other one, Singapore? The one he was on. Want to tell me about it? Why not? Maybe you can tell me what to do. I can try. Well, it all began late one night in September. I came down here for a last look at the sea before I went to sleep. I was leaning out over the railing, sort of looking up at the stars, letting the wind blow in my face. All of a sudden, I heard a splash in the water. Someone out there was swimming for the docks. Hey, you. You need any help? I'll make it. Here, here. Here's a ladder. There it is. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. All right, now. Beat it. No one tells me to beat it, mister. Where'd you swim from? Listen, you. Just forget you saw me, see? Just forget I climbed up this ladder. What's the trouble, cops? How'd you guess? Well, guys don't usually come in the way you did unless someone's after them. Well, they're after me, all right. I just ditched that freighter out in the bay. You need help? I need luck. Listen, beautiful, where can I hide out for a few days? Oh, aren't you afraid I'll call the cops? I gotta take a chance, beautiful. And I don't think you're the kind. Where are you from? The States. Every John Law in the country's trying to find me. What'd you do? Uh, there was a fight. When the smoke cleared, they found a dead man. Stiff with a big name. So they needed a fall guy. But listen, beautiful, I'm cold and wet. Well, stay right here. If you hear anyone coming, climb down the ladder so they won't see you. I'll run back and get your coat. And you can't walk down the street that way. Okay, beautiful. You win. I'll be back. Believe me, I I'll be back. <laughs> That was the beginning, Singapore. Well, what happened? You must have come back, of course. Oh, yeah, I went back. Well, there was something about him that, that made me want to help him. He looked so... so lonesome, I guess. Maybe he reminded me of the time I hit Singapore. I don't know. Anyhow, I, I went and got the coat and ran back. And there he was, still waiting for me. Well, you really did come back, didn't you? Didn't I say I would? Here, get into this coat. There. Now, here's my comb. How about straightening those pretty black curls? Thanks, beautiful. Now, we'll walk right down the street, just like we're going out on a date. Come on. Where are we going? Leave that to me. You can trust me. I won't do you no dirt, mister. Honest. Two of Singapore Liz, written by Ken Crapine and directed by Robert Webster Light, will follow in just a moment. But first, here is a word from your announcer.
back to the strange Will story, Singapore Liz, with Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Well, Singapore, so far I see nothing in your story that I can't understand. The fact is, you helped him. Yeah, I helped him. After I fed him and saw that he got a room, I went over to see Portuguese Jake at the Moon Dream Cafe. Jake liked me, so I knew he'd help me if I asked him to. He was in his private office. Singapore. Singapore, sweetheart, come in. Come in. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> now, what brings you over to see me at two in the morning? Come on now, tell Papa Jake. I need help, Jake. <laughs> you need help? <laughs> I don't believe it. You got someone for Jake to cut the throat, eh? <laughs> Jake, I'm, I'm hiding someone over at a rooming house near my place. I think someone, huh? <laughs> now, what is my Singapore Liz up to? Who is he? Look, Jake, be a good guy and don't ask any questions. What you want me to do, Singapore? Jake, I want you to help me hide him and until, well, until it's safe for him to go back to the States. You want me to hide him out, huh? And what you do for Jake after I held out this, uh, this bomb, hey, Singapore? Nothing, Jake. Same as always. Then why should I risk my neck to help him? Because I want you to, Jake. Uh, you're a strange one, Singapore. For two years I want you to marry me. And always I get the bombs rush. What's the matter with me, huh? Nothing, Jake. I think you're the swellest guy I know. Honest. Okay, Singapore. I take care of this, this guy. Keep him under cover for tonight and tomorrow I move him to a safe place. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. In a few weeks, I ship him off to Tibet, China. Somewhere safe. Okay? Jake? Yeah? As soon as he gets out of the country, I'm going to try very, oh, very hard to, to see things your way. <laughs> That's all right, Singapore. Don't do nothing till you're sure. Jake kept his word. Next day, he moved Jeffrey, that was his name, to the Chinese part of town. I went over to where he was staying almost every day. Did he tell you who he was, Singapore? He told me nothing. Only his first name was Jeffrey. Well, the days went by. I was so happy. I hated to see the day come when he would ship out. You, uh, you fell in love with him, huh? Hard. Only I didn't tell him. What's the use? Any day he was scheduled to go. He couldn't stay. Especially after that American dick arrived. They'd trace Jeffrey to Singapore then. Yeah, he came over to find him. We heard about it down at the Moon Dream. What did you do? Ah, Jake made arrangements to ship him out that same night. There was a ship sailing for Rangoon. I went over to say goodbye. It was hard to do, mister. But neither one of us said what we really wanted to. Both in love and afraid to say so. Sure. But it was so hopeless. Well, after saying goodbye, I went back to work at the Moon Dream. The joint was packed. Singapore! Give us Singapore! 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 Side of lotus covered door. A veil of moonlight on his lonely face. How pale the hands that held me in embrace. My sails tonight are filled with perfume of shadow. With temple bells to guide me to the shore And then I'll hold him in my arms And love the way I loved before On a little street in Sydney Seated. 
We are the police, and a search will be made of your identification. Oh, Jake, Jake, they're here. They're here to get him. Who's here to get who? The police, the American detective. They're out there now. Police in here? Yes, Jake. Well, there's Jeffrey. He isn't in here now. Yes, Jake, he's here too. I saw him come in while I was doing my number. He's sitting at that table in the corner. That fool, that fool. I told him not to leave the house until we came and got him. Well, let him get caught. It serves him right. Oh, no, 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 Jake. He must get away. He must. What can I do Singapore? I don't know, Jake. So, I, I've got one chance. I'm going to pull the switch that puts out all the lights. Maybe this deaf guy gets out. Maybe not. But it'll give him a chance. Stay here till I come by. What are... Well, mister, I had some anxious moments. The lights went out and Jeffrey got away in the scramble. He ran to my house and waited till I got home. Shouldn't have done it, Singapore. I shouldn't have done it. Oh, Jeff... You might have been caught or even killed. Oh, Jeff. There, there, beautiful. Don't waste your tears on me. But, Jeff, I love you. Can't you see it? Don't you know? And I love you, too, Singapore. That's what made me come down to the cafe tonight. I had to see you just once more. Don't you see what you've done? You made it tough on Jake to get you away tonight. The cops will be watching the docks. I know it, beautiful. Look, look, Jake will find a way to ship you out. I don't want to go, Singapore. I don't want you to go either. But you have to. You have to. Oh, poor Liz. <laughs> poor little Singapore Liz. I guess I brought you nothing but trouble, kid. That's what comes from loving the wrong guy. Jeff, listen to me. You get on that boat and go away. Get into China, Tibet. You can hide there. Maybe I can, but I'm not going to. Liz, I told you that they wanted to pick on me for a fall guy. That's the truth. I didn't kill anybody. I was there, yeah, but I didn't kill. But they'll railroad you. You said so yourself. Maybe they will and maybe they won't. But I've got to go back and face the music, Liz. That's the only way we can ever be together. I've got to go back. We? Together? Of course, Liz. I can't run away forever. And I want you, Liz. I want to marry you the minute I'm in the clear. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. What are you going to do? I'm going down and give myself up. Oh, no. No, Jeff. It's my only chance. My only chance to come back clean, Liz. It's my only chance of getting back to Singapore. And you. There you have it, mister. Jeff gave himself up to the law and they took him back to the States. I don't know what happened. He never wrote. Singapore, get ready for a shock. Why? Why? What? Jeff will never come back. Won't come back? No, Singapore. He's dead. Dead? Jeff dead? I don't believe it. Jeffrey Lane, his last name was Lane... You never knew that, did you? I, I never asked him. Jeffrey died in prison last year. He was serving a five-year sentence for being an accessory to the crime of murder. Then he... he was sent to prison. Yes. He never wrote to you, Liz, because he didn't even know your name. Then, too, he wanted to avoid the chance that you and Jake might get into trouble for hiding him from the police. I understand. While Jeffrey was in prison, his father died and left him a fortune... In fact, he left him almost a million dollars. A million dollars? Then one day, Jeff took sick. An operation was performed. It was an emergency. Jeffrey died. But on his deathbed, he made his last will. He never forgot you, Singapore. Not for a moment. I didn't either. In his will, he named you as sole heir to his estate. What? But he only knew you by the name of Singapore Liz. I spent months investigating you. Finally, through the cooperation of the police and other agencies, I learned that your real name is Marilyn Webster, that your parents were missionaries in the interior, that after they died, penniless, you drifted into Singapore and then made your living singing in nightclubs and cafes. Tonight, tonight when you asked me to come to your table, you knew all this, didn't you? Yes. 
When I first saw you standing at the dock, I knew who you were. But I wanted to know the whole story. I wanted to be sure. That's why I wanted you to tell me. Gee, mister. It's sure going to seem funny not to come down to the docks anymore. It was a labor of love, Singapore. People all over the world knew about you and your tireless devotion to an ideal. Five years. Five long years. Now, instead of coming back, he sends me a million dollars. I can't believe it. But it's true. Every word. Tell me, Singapore, what are you going to do now that you're a rich girl? Oh, I don't know, mister. Maybe we'll build a nightclub after I catch up on some of the sleep I've missed. We? Did you say we, Singapore? Yeah, for five years I've never missed a boat so that I could be the first to see Jeff and warn him. Warn him? Of what? Well, the day after the cops took Jeff back to the States, Jake was set up for harboring a fugitive. He served a whole year, mister. And when he got out, he swore that he'd kill Jeff if he ever came back to Singapore. I knew he'd do it, too. That's why I met every ship. To warn Jeff to stay on the boat and to go back home. Killing means trouble. I wanted Jake to stay in the clear. Ah, uh, he's been such a swell husband. <laughs> William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story of Singapore Liz. But first, here are a few words from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. <laughs> Next time you see a pretty girl standing on the corner with that hungry, lonesome look in her eye, <laughs> don't you believe it. More than likely, she has a perfectly good husband waiting for her just around the corner. There's a new Moon Dream Club in Singapore today, and of course, Singapore Liz, wearing her exotic oriental gowns, is still the big attraction. And, uh, Portuguese Jake... Well, he's doing all right, too. Who wouldn't with a million-dollar bankroll to play with? Next week, I have a story to tell you about a songwriter. <laughs> At least he thought he was. After weeks of hard work, he finally finished his opus, which he thought would reach the hit parade. He sent his song lyrics to a music publisher, and from then on, things began to happen. For a story filled with heartbreak, pathos, and love, listen to Swan Song. This is Warren William inviting you to join us again next week. Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Any similarity between names used on this broadcast and those of living persons is purely coincidental. 